Hey guys, it's John, your Tennessee Flying Farmer. Uh, day 28 of the Bill Challenge, so we are getting pretty close here. Um, I, it was raining last night, and I was by the time I got home, I was I was drenched, I was cold, I was wet, um, and I did not get back out here to get anything else done after the video last yesterday evening. So. Um, long story short, I'm going to try to get a little bit done today because I've got some stuff caught up on the farm this morning. It's been a busy morning and I'm out here. It's early afternoon, but I'm going to try to stay sneaked away for a couple hours and see if I can get a little bit done for you guys. My plan is to work on these Vans RV cabin vents. I kind of mentioned them in the last video. I think they're going to be work really well. Um, same thing I've used in the Super 701 and I've got them in the back here for this plane already so um well let's get started this guy's good now here's our farmer john humbred oh my god that was whoa. good whoa. i'm sitting in the plane because i'm kind of trying to mock stuff up and figure out exactly how and where uh airflow and that kind of stuff needs to happen you guys know i'm getting i'm getting the glass for the doors without the holes for the window vents so uh, do not plan that's just going to be a, a solid sheet there's not going to be any holes at all in it and i'm i'm kind of looking forward to that because that has been a little bit of a distraction just just to me with a super 701 anyway when i remove those i won't have any airflow coming from the outside edge of this plane inside during you know during the hot summer months whatever i've kind of got it covered from the center of the plane with these eyeball vents and of course i was just kind of in the works trying to get the ducting to go out and around to them but that's that's a challenge i'm going to pursue a little more as i get further along with the firewall forward stuff and make sure everything's going to fit so i think i've got those they're adjustable i can sort of aim those up toward myself and toward my passenger in there you can turn them off and on right there just by twisting them so i'm, I'm excited about those i've I've never had, never actually used any of those in a stole plane before, so I'm curious how well I can make that work. Of course, the other thing I'm looking at, since I've got these these cabin vents that essentially it's just like a small door, um, I'm studying exactly where and how and what it's going to take to make that work the way I want it to. I'm trying to see how how well it's going to fit where I want to put it. And when I get it there, I'm kind of looking at what the airflow may do as it comes in. It'll all be all be underneath your your legs. And I think it'll come in underneath enough and probably with enough force and movement and rotation and all that stuff, it'll it'll most likely add some pretty decent ventilation in here for the summer months. So where I'm actually looking at is that vertical section right there because there's just not simply there just is not enough room up there to do anything unless you put it in the very very uh, forward edge up next to the firewall and then you'd have to use a cable or a rod or something to be able to open and close it and i just really don't want all that extra complexity or weight if you come to this triangle here it gets you what i think is too close to the seat and it won't let it blow out, you know, in inward enough. And also this layer right here is doubled. So that part right there, that triangle is actually actually a double or so. Two pieces of aluminum there I'd have to go through and cut and make fit. That section right there is a single layer. And I think it'll work really well. Um, these things, let me get taken apart here that part will mount inside that channel up there and this kind of acts as its own doubler so it, it strengthens where you where you cut out the rectangle hole for the actual vent door so one on each side is what i'm looking at and then of course this piece will be mounted right here it'll be underneath where the latch is for the door and I'm, I'm just making sure there's no clearance issues or anything like that and i think it's going to work really well so that being said let's get to work doing this my first step um it'll have to be drilled for the holes there in that i'll essentially just have to clamp that inside of course there and drill from the inside out and once i get that done i can take it apart and clico it to the outside and 
uh, essentially draw where the cutting the cut out will need to be for the actual intake part of it. Um, my first step, I think, is really going to be to take this piece back off because I want to be able to have access without it. It overhangs just a little bit. I can get the clamp off, off and on there easier, measure and be sure I have just a tiny bit of clearance and get both sides identical that way. Now that I've got that very rough cut, I'm going to start smoothing the edges and get it actual rectangle. You can see on the back one there. It's pretty much a perfect rectangle just with rounded corners. And that, that's what essentially matches the actual door. So the door just barely does recess into that on the, the plate that's behind it. So I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Well, this is actually pretty time consuming. It's not bad work. It's pretty easy, but it's just, it's time consuming. So basically what I'm having to do here, I've got the, the back plate and the little bracket that goes across it mounted on the inside. Um, I'm having to take a, well, the way I do it anyway, I've got a pretty rough round file and I marked the door on the back plate. So I got a base mark on this skin. And of course, without the back plate on there, I don't want to tear it up, but I've been using a file to get these corners filed closer to where they actually go. And then I'll take my, let me grab it here. Then I'll take my, my little belt sander and I run it across and get the edges back all lined up. Now that I finally got it far enough along, I've got the door mocked up with the little bracket that goes on it and it can actually go inside now. So it fits in there just like this and I can, I, you have to be careful. I don't want to close it all the way because it's not trimmed hardly enough to not bind. But once I get it that far along, I can push it up there to where it where it's just beginning to bind and I can start working these edges and marking them around. And I've got this one far enough now that I was able to pretty much close it without it binding much. And I've been able to mark all the way around it. So now I can take the door back out and I can take the back plate off the back again. And I've got my little marks there around it so I can file that corner up into the corner with my round file. And I'll, I'll do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. So what you see here now is I've used my round file to essentially file out that corner up to the edge of my mark. And this file is roughly the same uh, radius as what the door is, the little door that fits inside that. The hole for this has to be just slightly bigger than what the door is and, and just barely enough clearance so it doesn't chip paint or something like that when you open and close it. And then the the piece that goes on the back side, it essentially acts as a doubler to help strengthen all of this piece. Plus, it acts as the back plate that this door actually shuts against. So that's, that's what kind of creates the seal for it. So that being said, now that I've got the little notches there a little bit a little bit closer you can see where it's it's closer to the line i'll take my little belt sander and this is what i was trying to show a minute ago i'll take my belt sander and i'll essentially just sand down through there from, from corner to corner and get that the rest of that line off and i'll do the same thing going across the top to the back and that should be getting really close so once i get to this point it's there's a lot of taking stuff on and off and on and off just because I want it to be, I want it to be as close to perfect as it can get. And it, that's, that's time consuming because you don't want to take off too much and have a big gap, but uh, it's, it's easy to go from not enough to too much. And that happens really quick. So you take off just a tiny little bit and then you put it back on to, and check and take it back apart and just a tiny little bit more trimming and then put it back on and check. So that's what I'm doing now. Just on, off, on, off, trim, on, off, trim, that kind of stuff. Okay, I've got it to where it is actually completely recessed now. There's no, I mean, it's the same, basically the same thickness as the skin. The door has a little doubler too, but there's not even a step there. So it just ever so barely is completely recessed in there. What I have to do now, uh, the way this thing actuates and works, there's a bolt that goes through that. So when that slot, when that, yeah, let me get my camera steady here. When that slot opens and closes, that bolt keeps the door in, in position. So I need to get a, a bolt stuck through there and be sure the door swings. And what that'll do, I'll push and position it forward and back exactly where it needs to go. So right now it can, 
you can move it back and forth that way and it'll sort of open and close. Let's see if I can get it actually out so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see a little bit of the, the you see how the slot's not perfectly in line with the hole right there. So I need to put the, the bolt in it and be sure that the slot and the hole are, are exactly lined up and the full swing will work without causing any trouble or binding or anything like that. But that's the basics of it. This thing is, uh, if once it's painted, uh, most people don't even notice it from the outside when it's closed because it's, I'll use the, the soft, solid rivets. Everything that's exposed will just be the, the small solid rivet heads. I'm excited about it because it's it'll be almost hidden once you get it all paint matched. The door will be up above it. My plan is to have essentially this trim piece will be painted black and I'll probably tape off a line underneath the door to match that black from the trim and bring that black on back around and, and toward the back of the airplane. And I may do the same kind of back there underneath the windows and kind of black out just a spot around the windows. So the the door will actually be the the second color of my two-tone. It'll be underneath the black strap or the black cut out for the windows. And like I said, once it's painted, it'll be almost not even noticeable when it's closed. Most people will never even think about it. Okay, guys, the first one is basically done. I've got it really close. Let me turn this around. And it's still maybe just a little bit too tight in how it fits up, but it's it's really close to the way I want it. Um, as you can see when it's open, and I've got the, I've actually got the bolt stuck through it and all that, so it's all, all working really well. When it's open, it's, I mean, it's actually makes a pretty decent little vent. I really like this. It's worked extremely well. And so with that being said, I've got one side basically, it's basically done. It's all mocked up, pre coded together. Um, I, need to, I need to fine tune it. I'll, I'll take it apart and get the edges deburred and that kind of stuff on everything. Make sure it's all in really good shape. I haven't even started on the other side yet, so that may be a project for tomorrow. I've, I've run out of time today. This, this takes, actually takes a fair amount of time. It's like I said, it's not hard, but it takes a fair amount of time to get it done really nicely and professional looking. Um, that being said, like I, like I just mentioned, I'm out of time. I've got to go back to the farm and catch some baby calves and deliver feed to cattle and uh, last minute checks for the day and it's starting to get late in the afternoon. So, and I need to put the video together for you guys on this. I'll try to get that done too. So I don't know how much more I may or may not get done tonight. Uh, tomorrow's project may be part two and that'll be door number two for the passenger side. So that being said, I'm headed to the farm. Again, I really appreciate you guys. The likes, comments, shares. Um, tell me what you think. I've, we've just got a couple of days here left. So ask questions. Give me ideas of what you would like for me to maybe pursue or work on here in the next couple of days and talk about. And I'll try to make that happen. So again, I really appreciate you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.